Hello, I'm Amy Padula, and I'm a postdoc fellow at Stanford University in the Department of Pediatrics. And I work with colleagues at UC Berkeley uh, on the Children's Health and Air Pollution Study. And the study evaluates the associations between air pollution and child, children's health outcomes, including asthma and birth outcomes. And today I'm going to talk about uh, traffic-related air pollution and preterm birth. Just to give you an idea of uh, what I'm going to talk about today. So I'm going to um, focus on uh, prematurity. And most of the studies uh, that are done on air pollution and prematurity look at preterm birth as a dichotomous outcome, so births be before 37 weeks gestation. Um, but, uh, but preterm is not just a single problem or a single disease. And we know there's a continuum of severity of preterm uh, uh, beyond just this 37-week cutoff. So we decided to look at several levels of prematurity uh, to address this problem. Uh, then I'll talk about cumulative impacts. And uh, when I think of cumulative impacts, my mind goes in a few different uh, to a few different areas. And I think uh, many of the speakers yesterday uh, talked about them. Um, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is effect modification by neighborhoods. Uh, socioeconomic status uh, and talk about the social factors and their influence on health outcomes. Um, and this gets to the idea of this of double jeopardy, a term that Rachel Morell Frosch has used uh, to explain uh, the impact of both traffic or, or of any kind of environmental uh, uh, stressor along with social stressors having a, uh, an even stronger impact on health outcomes. Then I'm going to talk about um, our multi-pollutant score, which is a very simple yet informative way of looking at multiple pollutants rather than uh, just individually. Uh, I'm going to briefly mention some implications for policy change and just wrap up with some of my plans for future studies. So just to give you an idea of our study population, we use the births between 2000 and 2006 in the four most populous counties uh, in the San Joaquin Valley. Uh, and this uh, was more than 300,000 births, uh, 12, uh, about 12 percent of which were preterm using that less than 37 weeks gestation uh, definition. But I'll go into more detail in a minute about how we uh, categorize them further. We used covariates from the birth certificate um, as well as some from the census at the block group level uh, to get at that neighborhood socioeconomic status, so things like um, uh, unemployment and public assistance income and uh, families below the poverty level. And exposures were assigned based on geocoded maternal residences. Um, so we used multiple air pollutant monitors that the US EPA has set up um, to calculate uh, people's exposure during pregnancy. And then we've also averaged those out over each trimester uh, to see if there is a kind of critical period uh, for preterm birth in terms of exposure. And then also looked at traffic density, um, which was uh, distance decayed annual average uh, traffic volumes. And that was done over the entire pregnancy. So our research question is, what is the association between traffic-related air pollution and preterm birth? And on the left here are our exposures, carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, particulate matter less than 10 and 2.5 micrometers, and traffic density within a 300 meter radius. And then our outcomes uh, were gestational ages at these different groups. So 34 to 36 weeks, which is often referred to as late preterm, uh, and also consists of the majority of preterms, 8% of our study population. And then 32 to 33 weeks, 28 to 31, and 20 to 27. And even though this bottom group of 20 to 27 weeks gestation accounts for less than a 1%, it still includes uh, almost 2,000 uh, births. So just to remind you of our our uh, sample size. And here are some of the results that really stood out to me as we were looking through. Uh, so we looked at each trimester and each pollutant for each category of preterm birth. So 
these results are for that second trimester of exposure. And it's comparing the highest quartile of each pollutant to the bottom three quartiles. And, um, and as you can see, the, the odds the odds ratios, actually the odds ratios that are bolded are statistically significant. I left out the confidence interval so that there wouldn't be too many numbers up here. Um, but one thing I want to point out is that the odds increase for each uh, category of preterm. So the more, there are stronger associations between pollutants and uh, preterm um, as we got into earlier and earlier gestational levels. Um, and these are pretty, uh, pretty strong odds uh, for that early preterm group. And I get also these were all adjusted for the kind of usual suspects on the birth certificate for potential confounding, uh, maternal age, education, race, birth weight, uh, and so forth. One more thing I wanted to say here is that, so uh, particulate matter was, um, the odds were particularly strong, um, no pun intended, but in uh, this next slide shows the results for PM10. Um, and this shows it across all three trimesters. So the second trimester were those numbers that I just showed you. But as you can see, the first and third trimester were a little bit more variable. Um, and so here on the y-axis are the odds ratios. Um, here's one, and there is an increase in, uh, in risk of those early preterm births, the 20 to 27 weekers, for both the first and second trimester of exposure. The third wasn't calculated because the births were so early, they didn't have a third trimester. Um, and you can see the rest uh, here. And then this next slide is the same graph, but for PM 2.5. Um, and a, a similar pattern in the second trimester is really standing out here. Um, so now I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about cumulative impacts um, and start with the social factors. Um, and, and this is looking at uh, both the physical environment and the social environment together and how they influence uh, preterm birth. And this uh, table are the results for birth at that 20 to 27 weeks. So this is the earliest category of preterm birth and exposures during the second trimester. And these results are stratified by low socioeconomic status. And so this indicator of low socioeconomic status at the neighborhood level was given for uh, women who lived within a block group that had more than 10% unemployment, more than 15% uh, income from public assistance, and more than 20% of families living below the poverty level. Um, and as you can see, the odds are much stronger uh, for preterm birth, at this, for early preterm birth, um, for all of the pollutants among this group of, uh, in the low neighborhood socioeconomic status. Um, so, and this is compared to the non low SES. So although everybody has this risk, it is stronger in this group. Um, and although this is consistent with our hypothesis, um, even I'm, I'm not used to odds ratios this large. So um, I was struck by these results. And now just also to talk about the multiple pollutants for a minute. Um, so although we regulate the pollutants at, on individually and generally study them individually, we're exposed to them uh, you know, in mixtures. So we created a pollutant score, and it's, it was just the number of pollutants that someone was exposed in, or was exposed to that highest quartile um, of each pollutant. So, um, and here's the distribution of our uh, pollutant scores. So 41% of the people were in the lowest three quartiles for all of the pollutants, um, and 3% were in the highest quartile for all of them. And then it broke down, um, as you can see here. And here's our results for the multi-pollutant score during that second trimester. And so the using zero as our reference, those in the lowest quartile for all pollutants, there's an increased risk for 
for each group, so one, the null is down here, this bottom line, and there's an increase both in the number of pollutants, there's an increase in odds of uh, preterm as you increase the number of pollutants for which you're in that high category. And then also the, the risk is increased across the categories of preterm. So the more severe preterm, the stronger the association. So I'm not sure if you can read this, but the green X's are the 20 to 27 weekers, and the, the red ones here are those late preterm. These results in general that I've talked about today are consistent with uh, the literature for the most part. There aren't very many studies on this early preterm, but here are a few um, that have found uh, have found associations between air pollution and this early preterm. Uh, they've been in different uh, geographic areas um, and smaller sample sizes, but uh, are certainly notable. So in Los Angeles, in Vancouver, and in Japan, uh, they've all found associations with traffic-related air pollution and preterm birth. And also I wanted to point out that some previous studies have also found low no neighborhood socioeconomic status as an effect modifier um, with a little bit more variable results, but uh, so some have found it stronger in that low socioeconomic status group. Um, one of these studies found it in the kind of counterintuitive uh, direction that those with more education actually had stronger effects. Um, and I will just uh, wrap up with this final slide. So, um, so just to go over uh, the cumulative impacts, we found uh, associations that are stronger for uh, those in the low neighborhood uh, socioeconomic group. And we also found that multiple pollutants, um, that those exposed to multiple pollutants at high levels uh, had stronger effects. And I think in terms of policy implication, this just adds to the num adds to the list of health outcomes uh, which are associated with traffic-related air pollution, and reminds us that protecting those most vulnerable, in terms of socioeconomically uh, vulnerable populations, that they're uh, in most need of being protected. And in terms of future studies, um, we do plan to incorporate more data on socioeconomic stressors, and, uh, and we're in the process of, of gathering more data. And then I'd also like to, to link these data with uh, further medical data so that we can separate uh, these preterm births uh, and know kind of the pathways and the mechanisms of prematurity uh, that may be uh, due to air pollution. So I just want to thank uh, my collaborators and uh, also our funders, the EPA and the NIEHS.